Advocates of pasture cropping, a farming system where crops are sown into live perennial pastures, claim that this technology provides a double income stream, green feed over summer, and positive environmental outcomes such as reduced drainage beyond the root zone and risk of erosion. Until recently, the viability of such a radical change in cropping practice in Western Australia has been uncertain due to the lack of local research and broad acre on-farm experience. In November 2012, Department of Agriculture and Food Research Officer David Ferris took a road trip to Geraldton to ask innovative growers about their experiences with pasture cropping. So Grant, here we've got a pasture crop, um, pretty unusual around these parts. How has it performed overall? We're pretty happy with the way it's performing so far, especially given the season that we were dealt and the fact that this crop went in fairly late and it was all a bit hit and miss. We didn't know what we were doing when we went in here and uh, it's turned out in our favour in the end, so we're really happy with it. To date, only a few growers have trialled pasture cropping across perennial grasses on a broad acre scale using commercial size equipment. The inputs that we used this year were not a lot different to what you'd use on an annual crop. Maybe the fact that we used spray seed up front instead of a glyphosate would be the about the only difference. Um, you know, I was very sceptical about how it was going to go because of the, the lumps on the, the grass and stuff and the way it all develops. But um, no, coming in the other day ago it was pretty good. Um, not as rough as I thought it was going to be. The crops are beauty. Uh, for the area, it's you know, roughly around a tonne at the moment. This one's doing about 1.2. Um, yeah, no, everything's good. Below average rainfall during the growing season, combined with rain before harvest, resulted in the lupin crop being low to the ground and perennials actively growing at harvest. As a consequence, a lot of green leaf material was harvested with the grain, but green material was simply blown off the back of the header. Would you come in and, and harvest again um, across perennials? Oh, I've already booked him in for next year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, no worries at all. Do you yep. think he's crazy or do you think this is a, a way of the future? I thought he was crazy to start with, but uh, when uh, the yield monitor doesn't lie. <laughs> so, no, nah, it's good. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's paid off for, for the man, so, yeah, no. Grant has established 1,000 hectares of subtropical grasses on his property. Not only has pasture cropping proved to be viable, it has also proved to be a more flexible system for managing variability in commodity price, livestock availability and seasonal outlook. We are mainly a stock concern, cattle concern. The perennials here have held the country together and we get feed out of every bit of rain regardless what time of the year it is so we doesn't there's no such thing as a nuisance rain um, no such thing as a false break it's all good rain and we make the most out of it all and by cropping into it I guess it we I, I think we're finding that the cropping into the perennials is rejuvenating the perennials a little bit and if we can make it work financially, we can get a little bit more out of the paddocks um, as well as rejuvenating. We're getting a, a double yeah, double serve. Yeah, and of course, we if, if we do get a light year like we've had this year, um, I mean, anything over a tonne is is pretty good this year. And we've still got, we're still going to get you know, two or three tonne of grazing out of this paddock over the summer as well. If we get a, happen to get some more rain over the summer, well, we'll get more than that. Um, so I think the, the benefits of the per perennials looks like it's, yeah, it's, it's a double-edged thing. The successful lupin crop in 2012 builds on a successful barley crop the previous season. Last year we put a crop in by default. I sowed some barley into a new paddock of perennials. Uh, mainly to try and bulk up the feed in the, in the paddock over the winter time. Uh, last year was a vast, vastly different to this year 
in as much as it was a very good season and I put the barley in there to graze it off. We didn't need it so then we sprayed it for broadleaf and put a bit of, you know, of uh, urea on it and turned it into a crop. Uh, that we, yeah, so for a, we went from a bit of barley that we threw out to graze into a tonne and a half barley crop and then we've had cattle on it ever since so it's uh yeah that was that that was pretty good and that was sort of really gave us some hope for the future of, of um, sowing crops into perennials pasture cropping has enabled grant to reduce the opportunity cost of establishing perennials diversify his farm business and integrate more cropping across the farm business on a farm scale this has the potential to lift overall farm profit on a paddock scale, the green feed combined with crop stubbles and spilt grain provide ideal conditions for weaning young stock. The, the lupins in Grant's paddocks have performed extremely well. That's about as good as you could hope to get, especially in view of the season we've just had. Uh, by Grant's, Grant's, what Grant was saying in the paddocks to us there was that where he's put the lupins in with the perennials, he's got pretty much the same yield as where he had the lupins stand alone, which is... Uh, best result you could ask for. Do you think Grant's crop has worked this year? Uh, I think the, the root, well there's probably a whole heap of reasons. Uh, the seeding operation has been done well. One of the things I like is the wide seeding uh, spaces he's got in his perennials. Gives a chance for crop establishment in between the rows quite easily. He, uh, the weed control has been good. The paddock was set up beforehand predominantly through grazing so it doesn't have a high weed burden which is a good outcome and the crop's been able to take advantage of the moisture. Given what you've seen at Grants, if you had to advise others interested in pasture cropping, what would be the key things you'd get them to consider? Preparation. When you, when you plant the paddock, set it up so that you can go and crop it. Uh, get those, I, I like the, the wider row spacings to help enable that. Um, uh, your grazing management prior to seeding, your crop selection, your variety selection, they're all things that just warrant sitting down and having a chat to an agronomist that uh, knows about these sort of things. A growing number of innovative growers are reporting positive pasture cropping experiences in the northern agricultural region. Success on a paddock scale using commercial machinery reinforces trial results from the focus site at Mora. Pasture cropping is viable and has potential to increase profitability, resilience and environmental outcomes of farm businesses in WA.